Finally a face I can trust. Everything all right, Poirot? I'm afraid things could not be further from all right. Don't tell me the famous Detective Poirot is stumped. Stumped? No. Perplexed? Oui. Perhaps you can be my perfect distraction. I may not be the celebrated doctor that my father hoped for, but I still like to keep up with recent medical journals. And what is the latest discovery? This particular article is about the effect of cocaine on the user's body. I thought I liked to have a good time, but that drug? Too much for me. What makes you say that? I wouldn't want my heart beating at the speed of a locomotive. Here, read for yourself. I haven't actually. I gave him my office telephone number and said he could call any time, but not a peep. You sound surprised. Yeah, he probably wants to keep his health issues out of the public eye. Hence me offering to help, but he seems to be just fine, surprisingly. Do you think there is a chance he could have faked it all? How those little grey cells of yours work sometimes. Amazing! Please, my friend. You're serious? Don't know why, but I suppose he could have. At this point, anything is a possibility. I think a visit to Monsieur Aylesworth at the Royal Society of Art is in order. Mademoiselle Babagna. A pleasure as always. Good morning, gentlemen. I'm afraid my pleasantries are to be cut short this morning. I have a most pressing matter. Just a moment. I'm coming. What a great commotion coming from behind the door. What on earth is Monsieur Aylesworth up to? Ah, Detective, what can I do for you? Could you spare a moment of your time? If you are feeling up to it. Why wouldn't I? You are recovering from a potentially fatal heart attack. I would not want to aggravate or upset you in any way. Ah, oh, are we really going over this again? It would help me clear up some discrepancies. Very well. As I've said before, I was in the House of Commons addressing the bench, as you know. And then I was speaking with the reporter. The editor, Nathaniel Dryden. If you say so, at the news office. Monsieur Ellsworth is sticking to his story. I did not expect that it would be easy to unsettle a politician of his experience. And why would I? And why would I? Oh, to thank him for his help at the museum, yes, of course. Uh, I've been meaning to send him a thank you gift. <laughs> One would think that thanking the man that saved your life would be further up your priorities. I'm a very busy man, as I'm sure you understand. And I don't know whether I'd go as far as saying he saved my life. On the contrary. Had Monsieur Demir not been there with his extensive medical training, and a man of your age, 
Perhaps you would not be here talking with me today. If Monsieur Ellsworth is not prepared to tell the truth, perhaps I can use his own pompous nature and guilt against him. The nurse said herself that I had the heart of a young athlete. It'll take more than that to slow me down. <laughs> well, I would not take that as a sign to start the sporting career. Merci, monsieur. I find myself in a most problematic position. My associate, Monsieur Hastings, is nowhere to be found when I need him the most. There must be someone else that I can call upon. Someone to fill the shoes of Monsieur Hastings. For the time being, at least. The obvious choice would be Monsieur Demir. But I wonder if he is suited to the task that is required. Good morning, mademoiselle. My apologies for my earlier departure. That's quite all right. Mr. Demir informed me of the facts. The case has taken a direction I had not foreseen, and it now leaves me. I will not stand here and listen to you wallow. How can I help? Go on. I require a distraction. I promise you will come to no harm and... Uh... Who am I to distract and from what? Monsieur Aylesworth. I need to gain access to his office without his watchful eye. Detective Poirot? Preparing to cross the line of law? Not cross. Merely tiptoe alongside. I assume you have already devised a plan? A requested tour of the Royal Society of Art Building should give me appropriate time. Then that is what I shall do. The door has been left ajar, exactly as required. I could hear Monsieur Ellsworth fumbling around behind his door on my last visit and combined with his hesitation to open his door to me. I can presume he had something he did not want Detective Poirot to see. Huh. Oh. Hmm. 
Tears. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. guess I would say a moment of genius I cannot see the logic in this Perhaps a second look at the evidence in... Voila. your hands up and step away from there. Monsieur, there is no need. Enough of your phony pleasantries. Let's see what the real police have to say. The first thing they would notice is the politician aiming his revolver at an officer while they are conducting official police business. I'm sure they would agree. I have every right to protect myself from a foreign intruder. If you were to lower the gun, Perhaps we could discuss the situation we find ourselves in. You may have authority in your own country, but not here. Now, uh, explain yourself. You don't know what you're talking about. Enough! I need a second to think about all this. Uh, how has it all come to this? No, uh, it's not my fault. It, it's... It is not too late. Your intentions were good. Scotland Yard will look sympathetically at... If you had just left that fool Hardwick to it, we wouldn't be here. And I wouldn't have to do this! I have done nothing but remain honorable to my oath to uphold the law. It is Monsieur's choices and actions that have brought us to this point. And he must accept responsibility for what is to come. Poro, 
Are you all right? All the better for seeing you, Hastings. I was worried I was going to miss him. Your timing and accuracy could not have been more parfait. perfect. What do we do now? We take our leave. And what about him? Will he be okay? He shall be fine. Although I am not envious of the sore head he will awake to. Come, there is much to tell. Behind the bookshelf. But I never. Monsieur Dryden, how are you? Detective... Poirot. Yes, of course. What can I do for you? She is, but not here, I'm afraid. Do you know where she is? She said something about heading back to the museum. For what, exactly? Forgive me. I recently inherited a number of belongings from a deceased relative, including an undeveloped spool of film. I'd like to help, but there isn't anyone here that could develop them for you. I'm more than capable, and I'll leave it tidier than when we arrived. In that case, knock yourselves out. I've got a meeting to run to anyway. I shouldn't be longer than half an hour or so. Pardon. Where has this confident and daring version of Monsieur Hastings been hidden? We all have a hidden side. It's just our own choice of when to show it. So our first step is... Don't tell me there is something the great Detective Poirot doesn't know. I must concede that photography is something I have little experience in. Lucky I'm here, then. We need to start with a tray filled with developing fluid. Next, pour the fixer fluid into another tray and then add the photographic paper. I have a newfound respect for those that make such activities look so simple. Let's just wait until we see the results. It shouldn't take long. Oh. Aha. Oh. Hmm.
Have you found it yet? You want the photographic fixer? And how would one know it from another? It smells like ammonia. Handy, I suppose, when you can't see much in here. Okay, I think that's everything. Oh. Is there a problem? There shouldn't be, but there must be light coming in from somewhere. Is that not the point of a dark room? That it will allow no light in to damage the photographs? We need to find where the light's coming in from and damaging the prints. You continue your work, and I shall find the curious light source. Hmm. Monsieur Hastings, may we talk a moment? I'm in the middle of developing these. Can it wait? I'm afraid not. We've already been over this, Poirot. I don't want to argue. I have no intentions of continuing our previous conversation. What we must address now is her potential guilt. She didn't steal the painting, though. We know that. Her guilt in Mademoiselle Gottsmeid's murder. Mr. Poirot, you are a genius. Mr. Poirot, you are a genius. That would never have even occurred to me. I've got a lot to learn. Look, this photograph is just about finished. Is that... 
It appears so. And what has she got in her hand? That can't be the same cigarette case. The cigarette case that was taken from Mademoiselle Farquhar's luggage on our voyage here. It appears Mademoiselle Farquhar had a much closer relationship with Mademoiselle Cotsmythe. I would say they... Cousins. Oui, monsieur. Hastings, I must thank you. For what? Allowing myself to be enticed by Miss Farquhar's feminine nature. For saving me from whatever Monsieur Aylesworth and his revolver had planned. If it wasn't for me licking my wounds, you wouldn't have been there alone in the first place. And if you were, and not at the Coltsmide estate, we would never have made such revelations. You are one of the most honest and authentic fellows I have met. You cannot allow a misguided moment of red-blooded male instinct to taint that. You have never let yourself fall to the wicked ways of the fairer sex. No, and that is a day I cannot even fathom. <laughs>